Hello and welcome, my good dudes. We are going to be playing more Sucker for Love, A Day to Die For. Yes, we're going to be doing the final chapter and possibly finishing the game, depending on if there's more, it's like, like a hit story or whatnot. But I hope you're ready, because here we go, baby boys. <laughs> Did I doze off while reading? My daydreaming always turns into regular dreaming when I do. Is... Wait a minute. I've got to get home. I'm sorry for falling asleep in your store, but I got to get. Uh... Someone off themselves right next to me while I was sleeping. Is that Mew? Did Buck get to her? I feel sick. So, so sick. The floor slips under my feet and I fall back hard, loudly knocking books to the ground. I assume they're books. I can't see anything. Everything goes black. What an awful dream. Hey! Hey! No! Wake up, you! Oh my gosh, did I break the human? Stupid, stupid, stupid! I cannot take you seriously with these kawaii freaking eyes! Are you, are you an alien? Uh, <clears throat> no, I'm a mysterious, sexy librarian hype. Look past my aloof and distant nature and fall in love with me ironically. I... I'm supposed to be looking at you, but all I see is this. An alien is playing with a corpse in front of me. An alien is playing with a corpse in front of me. This can't be real. I must be dreaming still. It's not a dead body, promise. It's just a doll I use to interact with humans. Sorry to scare you. I was just hanging it up to dry, see? Oh, you wash your... Human doll? Also, hey! I'm not an alien! Shoggoths are from Earth too, you know! Shoggoths? Huh? Plural? Is more of you just walking around on Earth? We live where all the undiscovered nightmare fuel hangs out. Bottom of the Pacific Ocean. Not my fault you guys went to space before 100 percenting your own planet. We're like 100 miles from the ocean. What are you even doing all the way in the countryside? One day, I grew tired of the darkness beneath the waves, and upon tentacle and maw, I skulked upon your shores for one reason. You can't write smut underwater. Uh, I guess, I mean, technically you're right. In the worst way possible. What a trivial reason. You know, I think I would have heard on the news about giant tentacle monsters roaming through the country. <laughs> pose. You think so, but I am a master of disguise and an expert on human linguistics. I've studied your culture extensively from the water, and I've mastered every language and can speak them in any accent. Check out my cowboy voice. <laughs> Howdy, partner. <laughs> All right. Whoa, it's like you're a real cowboy. Well, thank you, thank you. write your languages so I could read your human books. They're far superior to cosmic scriptures. Don't get me started on the localizations. But that seems like a lot of effort. My complex motives are far beyond mortal comprehension. I dumb idly along the spines of books written in English. They have very sus titles. You learn every human language just so you could consume all of our smut. Aren't as complex as I thought. I can't with you. <laughs> Already, I can't with you. You also make life like human models and learn every language that humans speak. I, 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 I have a thing for humans. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! I'm, I'm, I'm very sorry. Looking around the store, a lot of these books are Elgic heroes and lore, but some of these books. Big Slippery Shogath Girlfriends Volume 2? My Little Night Gaunt can't be this. I. What are these titles? Oh, Jesus! The hell is that? They're explicit stories about love between humans and Eldritch entities. I didn't know these kind of books even existed. Did. Did she make all these? What is wrong with you? And. Aren't you the one who's been writing my ultra dangerous reality bending ritual books? Nah. Well, I mean, yeah, but I mainly just write 
smutty doujin. We is w stop talking about your freaking fetish. Sorry, I'm just having trouble wrapping my mind around that. They seem like two completely dissonant skills. <laughs> yeah, those two hobbies are completely unrelated. What's going on here? I raised an inquisitive eyebrow. Wait a minute. What? So, you make smug books fantasizing about humans and elder gods meeting, and also make spell books that would allow humans and elder gods to be in real life? You really are the cause of all this! Wait, I know what it sounds like, but I can explain. Mm. Go ahead. Wow, <laughs> I just said that myself. <laughs> I've got nothing. I'm a disaster for human Eldritch love. You're a disaster for humanity. You indirectly summon reality ending gods to our realm just so you can watch them dang humans! I'd say I pretty directly summoned them, actually. Also, why the heck did you make the ritual so freaking scary? They're rituals for an outer god. They're all scary. All the time. Well, if you're supposed to be helping me, Why'd you put up the most important ritual at the very end? What? The uprooting ritual? Eldritch rituals are serious business. Doing them out of order could cause who knows what. And it's not like I've been asleep at the wheel here. I've been changing the books each time I find a potentially quicker, safer path to uprooting. But there's only so many options when humans outright can't produce some sounds needed for many incantations. I haven't had a problem so far. Say Worcestershire sauce. Worcestershire sauce. Worchy, workus, where... Okay, you made your point. All I was trying to say is that it's a cryptographic marvel that you can consistently perform these rituals. And that I'm a genius. That's all I'm really trying to say. Oh, is that all? Besides, Roxy loves the rituals. She's a god, she likes rituals. And the scarier they are. The faster you fall in love! Nani. Also, how dare you use my nickname for her? That's not how that works at all. It totally worked! Roxy likes you! Like, she likes you, likes you! Oh, she's got it bad! R really? Oh, yeah! I'm writing fanfics of the two of you right now! This stuff is <laughs> hot! I demand you stop that right now, or at least give me royalties. Let's see. Tax. Pining. Slow burn. One-sided. It's not one-sided! It's not?! Wait, I mean, well, she's really gorgeous and... I ship it. Wait, no. Size difference, age difference, mommy, monster girl. Stop! Wait, is Roxy a monster girl or a furry? Stop! I'll add them both and let the algorithm work its magic. Stop! Roxanne, Stardust. Oh my god! Your ship name is Rockstar! No! Or Starzan! Where's my misplay? <laughs> hey, I hate to kill the fun, but a lot of people have gotten really hurt because you made this book, including me, thousands of times. It was never supposed to be like this. I thought only good things could come from summoning Roxy to your world. She just wants Earth to be one big happy family. And she's a wonderful mother. And she's kind. She's the only one who didn't laugh me out of Astrid's court when I suggested that humans and Eldritch entities belong together. In fact, she agreed with me. We made the book together. An all-in-one ritual book full of spells that would make the perfect date. Plus an abort button. The uprooting ritual. In case the human needed to be rescued from Roxy. <laughs> Okay, that is kind of funny. <laughs> In case a human needs to be rescued. We picked the perfect human together, too. A young, handsome human man who had already spent so much time and money fruitlessly trying to contact Roxanne on his own. Hmm. Is that Buck, perhaps? He flew through the rituals, started a huge family in her worship, and grew the thousand to such a size that the whole world was under Roxanne's influence. They never really clicked like I had hoped, but he had his god, and Roxanne had her family. They were so, so happy and carefree. But you should never be carefree when dealing with cosmic forces beyond reckoning. 
At some point, Buck decided to steal a smooch outside of Black Ceremony, completely out of order and without consulting the ritual book first. Instead of causing some obscure ritual to fail disastrously, something far worse happened. He accidentally performed a certain ritual perfectly by pure bad luck, the kiss of immortality ritual. It was sealed with the smooch he stole. So yeah, it was definitely a womp womp situation. That was all him. He tried everything to reverse his immortality. When nothing worked, he changed. So many people, so many humans that Roxanne considered her children. All these realities later, he's still tormenting her. I don't know if it's revenge or if he's got some other plan in mind. What a big fat screw up this was. If Roxy of all the gods can't find happiness with a human, there's no hope for any of us cosmic entities. Between you and me, Roxy is the hottest one in the family by far. I have a feeling that there would be plenty of people who would disagree. They might be wrong, though. So, that's why I'm trusting you with my books. I hope it's not too weird to say, but... I think after seeing you time and time again, that I should have given you the book to begin with. Well, I'm glad the book eventually found its way to me, but it's like a pass baton. Every leg of the sprint leading up to me was significant and worthwhile. And if I got to pass it on again... I think I'm okay with that, but I also think I would really like to be the one that gets to cross the finish line. The one who gets to show Roxy how far we ran together. Okay, that's it. You two are too perfect. Sorry, Roxy, you're gonna kill me for this, but you can't expect me to sit through a thousand episodes of Stardust dying before you can admit how you feel. Here you go, you crazy kid. It's the kiss what? of immortality ritual. Do us all a favor and end up together already. Wait, that's the same ritual that Buck did. Becoming permanent. This means I'll never die no matter what. Even when reality ends again, will I end up like Buck? Holding the Sandra page fills me with a palpable dread. This ritual is what started all of this. It's what caused Buck to go mad. It's what turned a thousand against Roxanne. It's what made re every reality a nightmare. It's what caused me to suffer and perish countless times. But... It's also what brought me to Roxanne. I think this is it. I think this is the key to ending all of this for good. It's how I can stop Buck in the nightmares. Oh? Fighting fire with fire? Not exactly. Once I cast this, my fate will be the same as Buck's. There's no takebacks. But I have the heart to live with what I've given. No takebacks needed. I'm ready to accept what great highs and lows eternity has in store for me. She is very devout. If you give love, it comes back. If I embrace eternity, eternity will embrace me. All right. Now I'm really pumped. No more baton passing. I'm going. Are you coming too? No way, Jose. Buck's scary looking. That, that's your only reason? Uh. Yeah, yeah. I know that I'm scary too. But I can't just run into the unknown like humans can. Shagoths aren't brave like you are. I'm the only one that even left the sea for crying out loud. Don't worry. You don't have to come. I have your book. That's all I need so far. That's all I need now. Go get him, Stardust. No signs of anybody. Oh, God. Root Bloom. That means I probably died here. This could be the end of my life as a mortal, couldn't it? Oh, snap. I think that was from the last ending. Dang, leave me alone, but All in all, I have to say it's been a blast, and whatever's ahead, I know there'll be something to love. Oof, stop lagging. What the hell? Kiss of Immortality. To perform a Kiss of Immortality, simply kiss Roxanne's, Roxanne's Zelva Oscura in the presence of a greater root bloom. If there is no greater root bloom present, stand in the room with Roxanne and at least 10,000 root bloom flowers. Draw the symbol. Chant. The flower will bloom within seven minutes. Eternal life awaits you. Make the most of it. This section of the book has been compiled from the deaths of your past lives in order to ensure your current incarnation survives as long as possible. Your suffering in this place has earned you this advantage, so adhere to the instructions precisely. Cloud of flesh flies. If you hear a loud buzzing, oh god, our sudden swarm of flying insects, flee now. 
Move quickly and deliberately away from the room you spot the bugs until you can no longer see a single fly. The flies will not follow far, but be wary. Once they caught your scent, there will likely be another feeding frenzy within minutes. You aren't fleeing the flies. You're fleeing from what they're coming from. Let's see, turn into this murder. Check windows frequently. In the event of seeing a flock of crow-like creatures outside, immediately flee to an interior room without windows, open or closed. They are not crows. Their arrival will be silent, but their number is great. Once you hear a loud flapping of wings, they have stopped circling. It is safe to come out. Hush of the deep forest. If all sound has been stolen, panic. Loudly. What? Loud noises are your only salvation. Keep a running clock in your head. At least once every 15 seconds create loud noise. It does not matter what it is, only that it's loud. Do this for a full minute. Alright, summon Ultra Predator! If you feel a sudden sense of dread and your heart begins to race, it is your natural prey instincts. Hide in the room with only one entrance and no open windows. Once inside, face the only way in. Do not look away. Waiting is the worst part, but stay strong. It will never attack you from the front. Once the dread subsides, or it has likely stopped prey elsewhere, or it found a better hiding spot. Hmm. Stay in canopy. If your vision is darkening, or you catch a glimpse of trees where it shouldn't be, the black woods are forcing night upon all living things within it. This includes nocturnal predators. Find any lit candles and stare directly at them. The trees will retreat from its glow. Do not look away. A song of morning birds chirping means you survived the artificial light. Or night. Why is there so many? Call out the seventh knock. Listen carefully for the direction of the knocking. Move slowly towards the sound. If another sound distracts you, do not follow it. The knocking is your only guide. Pull the door open in one swift motion once the seventh knock begins. Do not hesitate. Your timing must be perfect. If the sixth knock comes before you find the sword stays perfectly still, do not even breathe. It may pass you by. There's a lot of these! Oh my gosh, I'm going to be freaking suffering, alright? Death of death. If you know this course rises from the fields of root blooms flowers, the second floor balcony is your only sanctuary. It is the only room you never died in. Your deaths have been given new life, and they are hungry to trade their fate for yours. They will not last long in this world, and will starve quickly. Wait it out. Be warned. There may be stragglers. There's so many! Spiteful dwelling. If the walls and floors begin creaking loudly, the house itself has been given life by the volumes of immortal blood spilled within and soaked into the foundation. Exit before you are crushed. Oh! The staircases are not safe. Do not use them. If you are upstairs, you must leave through a window. Hmm. Do not use doors that move on their own. They are mouse. What the heck is that? Ah, that's so many! Jeebus! The thick mist will fill the lower levels of the house. Seek higher ground immediately. Dump near any open window on the top floor. The spores work fast. Dizziness and nausea will overtake you within seconds of exposure. This is insane. The megafauna hobbit stalks silently and seemingly at random and odd and possibly elegant limbs. Avoid being in the room fit for too long. Upon seeing it, you will be compelled to scream yourself to death. No, it does not appear to be hostile, but you have died many times because of- What? So, yeah, hmm. Hello? Hi. Hi. Uh, <laughs> if you hear the loud cry of a baby, flee to the heart of the woods. Do not emerge until the candles blow out on their own. There's like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, eleven different things that's gonna kill me within seven minutes. I gotta hold out for seven minutes. Oh my, this is gonna suck. This is gonna suck. The knock one is gonna be the one that probably gets me. I'm, I just, I'm just exploring just so I get a quick layout of the area. All right, let's summon here. Searching this time, I was too anxious to fall asleep. So, this is it. Buck is the only remaining member of the Thousand. I like that you're still worried that of all things. Are you ready for what's to come? No. It's only hitting me just now that this kiss of mortality thing. Isn't it kind of like asking to marry her, promising to be with her forever, sealed with a kiss, no takebacks? Holding this book feels like fumbling with an engagement ring in my pocket. Stardust, are you alright? Oh, yeah, I'm fine. Um. Nervous? <laughs> you don't even know. The butterflies in my stomach are building to the point of unbearability. 
Just as I'm about to swallow them down, a breeze blows into my room, carrying a foul stench that fills my lungs. I fall over, retching. My eyes sting and wire uncontrollably. I have to actively fight the urge to hurl. What is that smell? Did something die? No. Something didn't. He's here. I can sense him. You've got the book? Got it. Now or never. I prop myself up on one knee and open the book to the kiss of immortality, revealing it to her. Kneeling? <laughs> you don't have to kneel to me for my rich... Where did you get that? Moo! I thought I had something to say planned, but my mind is completely blank with nerves. Say something, anything! Roxy, I, I only exist because you dream about me. Without you, there would be no me. And when I look back on my life and all the things that I got to see and do, it take me forever to say thank you, so I will. Walks inside the house. I got to get going. Think about it, okay? I'm going to get started on it, but I won't finish it if you don't say yes, okay? Okay. Finally, here we go. One versus one. I got only one ritual to get through. Let's do this. God damn it. It's freaking me already. Go, Kaya, and I and I fit fit talk. Are you ready for the challenge? No! No! I hate this. 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 Frick! See her bugs. Buzz is ceased. Okay. Shh. Not good, not good, not good. Gotta get out of here. More of them. I'm about to die. I'm about to die. I'm about to die. It's getting really bad. Okay. Good. Predatory growl. at the door. Go away! Heavy stats retreating. Faint buzzing. Shit! Trying to get her away from the bees. Now I think about it, that might be his buck. God damn it, too strong! Ah! Yes, yes. What's happening? Oh no! Oh god! Oh, so far, me! Get me out! Oh god! I don't like this. Okay, get out of here. I'm dying. I'm dying. I'm dying. Thank you for putting that checkpoint in there, though. I do appreciate you. I appreciate you. I care about you. I gotta go upstairs. Okay. Three minutes. Do I hear chain? What was that? I hear curls. Game! How 
many times must I suffer? <laughs> this seems like the safest place to go for that. That's just freaking gross. Okay, well, I'm in the right place. I'm sitting right here. Hey, look at this flames. It's beautiful, right? <laughs> That's why no one loves you. Go away. Go away. Yep. Yep, I'm gonna stay right here. Keep my happy butt right here. Look at that, these beautiful flames. Go away. Go away, you attack fetus. <laughs> the arenas and the crazy fetus. <laughs> Seriously, go away. I don't even know what she's supposed to. Actually, I know what she's supposed to signify. You need to go. Well, at least you know what? This is good. It's like taking a lot of time. Mmm, oh. around my ear. This is so stressful. Go away. This is helping me in one fact that it's like taking a lot of time away. But. This is stressful, and go over. <laughs> you know what you say right there. You're, you're you're making me win. What is happening? I am stressing out. I want to turn around so badly. Oh my gosh, my curiosity is kicking into full freaking nitro right now. I want to look. Go away. Six, five, four, three, two, one. I win. All right. The flower should have bloomed by now. I just need to get back. Was that Roxanne scream? I gotta get back now. It's kind of funny. I didn't get to see all the craziness. I had a plan and it kind of worked. I'm very grateful that they didn't make me actually have to restart like to the like, very beginning. That would have been stressful. Hey, lovebird. Damn. Uh, so yeah, this version of Immortality sucks a big one. Stardust! We- What are you doing to her? Scaring her awake. Now that you're here. Easier. I want to be so angry. But I can't be angry then I'm frustrated and confused. Why? Why would you do this? Tormenting us into going to change the thing. Why can't you just face reality? That you're immortal already. The reality is that I'm immortal. I couldn't care less. If the Eternal Sleeper wakes up, the end. Immortality or not. I vaguely remember reading something about that in Muse Library once. A god that dreams all the other gods into existence, and by extension, all the realities. Wait, that means... You're talking about ending everything? Everything, everything! How is torturing Roxanne supposed to do that? Why are you punishing her? To make her scream loud enough that the sleeper hears it. If she doesn't, maybe another god will. Any god that learns that I exist will start having nightmares too. Once I'm in their head, it's sheet clutching nightmares forever. I'll never stop. I only need one screamer. I'll find them eventually. I'm human. The ultimate persistence predator. And you would have gotten away with it, too, if it weren't for this meddling cat. I know you did not just say that. Freaking Nyan Nyan. Hello, Hans. Oh! Auntie Nyan Nyan? How dare you make me say that? Threatening to terrorize my very sisters and granddaughters the way you so tortured my niece? <laughs> I respect that. My silly flock of hands could use a good browbeating. But trying to speak to the Eternal Sleeper? Come now, that is the duty of a god, not a human playing pretend. I will articulate to you the difference. Oh snap! What a lucky break! I can complete the kiss! Wait a minute, if Auntie Nana drags Buck into her dream, she's going to start getting nightmares too. Buck's going to end up in the mind of a god who talks directly to the Eternal Sleeper. That's exactly what he wants! All right, well, good. Uh, have fun, but now nah, I think she kind of deserves this. Yep, good, good, good on you. Good on you. No, she, 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 she had that coming. 
She literally got outplayed by a human. <laughs> okay, hey, hey. Auntie Nana. Auntie Nana, stop that crap. Stop it right now. Good, he's free. It's now or never. I never had a bad dream in my life. But I've had dreams so wonderful that it woke me right at the best part. And if I become immortal, I'll survive through her waking up this time. Roxanne? I don't have the time to say it now, but... Well... When I have forever to say it... You've already said it. Time after time. I love you too. I was in the middle of my speech! I was gonna say something cool, what the hell? You're... You're okay with this? Mm -hmm. Was that a second kiss of immortality? <laughs> no, just a regular one. Stardust, since I met you, I wondered how I could be so lucky. How you could have appeared so suddenly, like a bright star in the darkest sky. I think it's because, despite everything, I never stopped believing in good. That someone like you had to exist somewhere. And you did. You are the good that I knew had to exist somewhere in this infinite cosmos. Stardust. You're the most wonderful thing I could have ever dreamed up. <gasps> Thank you, my twinkling Stardust. Gram Gram, you're crying. Did you have another bad dream? Hey, it's Lynetta! She was from the first game! No, child. Do you want to hear about it? What? But you never want to talk about your dreams! I had my reasons. I didn't want to fill your head with fear of humans. Now, I can tell you about love. Love? For humans? And Esther! Oh my gosh, the game's all here! And where's D? I believe I know. But I believe, in time, you just might come to love them, too. Ew! Oh! Wait a minute, is this like a prequel? This might be a prequel, huh? Oh, keep it down, ladies! Sleep well? Because these two should know about love, because uh, the, the protagonist of the first game. <laughs> well, this bite's the big one. Hmm. So, uh, how you doing, Buck? You know, out of every Stardust I've met, you've been the biggest pain in my ass! <laughs> uh, yeah, sorry about that. So, this is eternity. Where are we? Space between dreams. Get comfortable. Well, you know what? At least now you have somebody to talk to in this whole millennia of us uh, drifting through the endlessness. Are you going to try to kill me? You wish. We just get to sit here and stare at each other until the next dream starts. Oh yeah, this this will be hell. Yeah, yeah, okay. I, I see why you're angry. How many times do you have to do this now? We we. I'll get the bookmaker, or I'll get caught by Nyanlithotep, or I'll go back to my original plan. You can't do any of that now. I'm here, and I'm not going away ever again. I'm gonna be annoying. Yeah. How you like that, buddy? I'll be right there behind you. Do you even know what you're in for? Infinite, cruel, eternity. I think in a truly infinite cosmos, you find exactly what you're looking for eventually. You look for cruelty in the cosmos of infinite volume and found it in no short supply. But you know what, Buck? When the dream starts again, I'm going to run barefoot through the gas. I'm going to watch scary movies. I'm going to love, be joyous, move, learn, cry, and feel so much that all of the bad is worth it. That's what I did when I was mortal. That's what I'll do now. That'll end. 
The clock is ticking on how long you'll still be able to experience any of those things. The clock was always ticking, Buck. And when it runs out, ashes to ashes, stardust to stardust. But there's things out there worth seeing before that happens. Things that'll make it all worthwhile, I swear it. You know what? Come on, we're going on an adventure! Taking me? This void is infinite, right? Then I bet there's an infinite number of things that'll make life worthwhile too, even out here. Stop me when you see it. And we're going on the adventure! Wait, you can fly this whole time? We had this ability? Why were you sitting here suffering in solid, like, solitude? Well, you could fly through the cosmos and see the world in all its infinite glory. Or the endless void, I guess. I don't know, man. <laughs> I don't know how this works. We just gonna fly until something happens. And the book is like, oh, God, I'm just here. Dedicated to my brilliant wife, Carly Hunter. You make me a real sucker for love. You literally had this whole cosmos to look for? And you was just bored, just sitting there? You know what, buddy? That's all on you. If you like, okay, see, I thought he was just sitting there in, like, infinite darkness. But there's actually, like, cosmos and planets and stuff that you could have been visiting? Make use of that! That can at least give you a few thousand years worth of freaking stuff to do. <laughs> like, are you kidding me? Alright, 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 all right. Okay. So. And that was a freaking sucker for love. I do think there's something else, though. I'm gonna wait until the end before I, like... I don't know, before I call it. But I will say this. A few things. A few things. I did like the story. I did like that it was more cosmic horror than the uh, first one. But at the same time, I don't feel like we got enough of Roxanne. Like, we got to talk with Lynetta and, like, Esther a lot in the second game. Or the second, sorry, the first game. But this one, we didn't really get to know her whatsoever. I mean, we got to feel, we got to learn, like, you know, a few things and whatnot. But we didn't get to sit there and just straight up, like, talk with her. Like, it was like a, almost like a date in the first one. It was a date. Listen, let's not kid ourselves. It was a freaking date. <laughs> but it wasn't like that in this one. And... I don't know, I kind of wish we could have more time to talk with her. Like, this, she, she's talking about like how she had this whole unique link name for her. Roxy. Roxy. So why didn't we ever use that? That should have been part of the story. You know, they shouldn't have skipped so much with the chapters. I mean, I get it, you know, time constraint, gay voice actors, cost money, and, you know, all the freaking illustrations. But at the same time, they should have built upon the relationship between Stardust and Roxanne. That's how I feel. I, I think it was. I still think it was a fun game. It was a fun game, but I definitely think the first one was more. I like the first one more character-wise. Horror-wise, definitely this one. I think S story, character-wise, the first one. That is my only disappointment. Maybe that'll change. Maybe we'll know more about this game. How long are we gonna be flying through this universe? I like that we got the stop option, but I'm gonna wait for it out. <laughs> Alright, we're gonna- I'm gonna skip ahead. I'm gonna skip ahead. Stop. Stop? Uh oh? I'm... speechless. And I'm not any closer to seeing it all. Oh. Looks like a new dream is finally starting. Ready to go duke it out again? Maybe later. I think I prefer to stay out here. It's... peaceful. It'll take me a while to see everything. Thank you. Aww. Roxanne, I can't wait to see what you dreamt up now. Looks like Buck has a happy ending too. Come on outside, Stardust. Okay. Nanny. Ah! Oops. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to scare you. Nanny. How many times have we ambushed her? Of course she'd be jumpy. I said I was sorry. I couldn't think of anything better to shout while I jumped out. Why did you have to jump out at all? Good question. 
Nani, Billy, kid, you're all here. And none of them had the stare. Like, of course, silly. Where else would we be? It's not like we can just leave the woods. But now that they've pretty much covered the whole planet, we can go everywhere. I can finally go shopping in Paris. And I'll be able to go on a world tour. My fans will love it. And oh, Billy, you simply must come with me on tour. I'll need a bodyguard, and you're perfect for the role. I'd rather eat my shoe. <laughs> Billy, stop being cranky. Why are you so cranky, Billy? She desires combat. Sorry. I didn't get enough violence out of my system before peace broke out. Oh, wow. I was actually... I was kidding. Oh, yeah. You should see outside, Stardust. Everything's different. It's a whole new world waiting to be re-explored. No reason to ever come back to this old place. Ugh. Can we please get out of here already? The wallpaper's peeling, the floorboards are rotting, and I'm pretty sure I just saw a rat the size of a chihuahua run by. Had enough of this gross old house to last a lifetime. Hey, shut up! I used to live here. This is her childhood home. Thank you. Damn. Oh, uh, I mean, uh, it's uh, nice. Wait, wait, wait! You knew that she lived here? I spent forever trying to figure that out. Why didn't you help me or, or leave me a note or something? I was your boss. What's your one rep max on bench press? Guys, if it's all the same, I might take a moment to say goodbye to this place. I'll be outside in a sec. <sighs> no worries. The rest of your family already got their chance to pack up and say their goodbyes. Only fair you get your turn. My family's here too? Oh yeah, they're totes outside. Your folks are like, really hitting it off with Roxanne. What? Color me shocked. Who could have possibly expected that a goddess of fertility and a married couple with 10 kids would get along. But, like I said, no rush. Especially if you don't want to get caught in the crossfire of their grandkids discussion. Take all the time you need. We'll wait for you. The trio steps out into the daylight, leading me to what will likely be my last goodbye to this house. Hmm? What's going on? I'm hearing the jinglings. The jinglings of what, though? What? You are Buck's replacement. You can be replaced, too? No, 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 no. Hold up. This might be another ending. We're gonna go outside. We're gonna, we're gonna go outside. Something else might be happening. We gotta, we gotta, we gotta wait. I don't like that I saw that. The jingling gets quieter. Thanks for playing. True end. Are we sure about that? No, something felt wrong about that. This is very feel good though. And uh, there you Roxanne! And then your family! And I'm guessing that's new. <laughs> weird. No, maybe not. I don't know. That's weird. It says true end, but I'm feeling a question mark. I'm really, really feeling a question mark. We're going to say this is the true end, though. We'll see. Oh, I want to see the pictures. It's supposed to be adorable, but that's actually terrifying. They're like, oh, 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 oh Cthulhu! <laughs> oh, you're so adorable. Hmm, what is this about? Like, see, the way that's being told is making it seem like this was all planned. Jingling gets louder. If this was all planned, did Buck do the same mistake? Do you want to make the same mistake? Oh, maybe Roxanne's not as good as we thought. Maybe she set this all up. 
Like, I don't want to think that, but it generally gets louder. Why are you following him? Him? Oh, Buck, I guess. Does it lead me down here? Everyone's waiting for you. What? What do you think you're doing, Stardust? Well now, aren't you just full of surprises? When you first stumbled into these woods, cheeks wet with tears of rage, your only desire was to see these twisted trees burn. For a moment, I thought you'd forgotten your quest so easily, in exchange for a flutter of lashes and a flash of thigh. It seems I may have misjudged your resolve, a mistake I do not often make. Those seeking to destroy the Black Woods inevitably become compelled to worship it. That boastful promise is printed in every version of this contemptible book. Will you prove them liars and burn them down in a fit of mortal defiance? What is happening? Or will you prove them right and spend your immortal days simpering at my niece's cloven hooves like a love-struck fool? In the very Eden you swore to raise to ashes. Why do you want to destroy our freaking love? The agony of indecision suits you, little matchstick. Though I do hope you choose to burn it all down. I've never cared for happy endings. Or goodbyes, for that matter. <laughs> Objective, come outside, Stardust. Oh, what is happening? If your relationship with Roxanne, Silva, Oscar has soured, and you no longer wish to have the earth consumed by the Black Woods, this ritual is the only way to rid your reality of them for now. But I'm immortal. What's the point of me doing this? Hmm. Oh well. Bye, everybody. Burn! We just burned there! I... I don't know how I feel about this ending. Truth end. Oh, 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 Roxanne, Roxanne. Oh, you're a little player, aren't you? Look at you. So many mortal beings. She was using us. She really was using us. She helped create the situation. And then she gets somebody else to go through the whole scenario. The truth end. Interesting, but we didn't really learn much about that. That's crazy. She's a bit of a liar. You're a bit of a liar. All right, well, you know what? If there's another ending, I'll try to find it, but I think that I'll call it for this episode. Yeah, and that's gonna call it. Thank you all for watching me play Sucker for Love Day to Die For. I don't know what to say about that ending. The truth ending really cements that we were just a puppet the whole time. She literally forced us to go through that whole scenario. Now that you think about it, maybe Mew was in on it. She wanted us to go through the whole thing about falling in love with her so that she could go have another immortal that she gets to like play and dance around with until she gets bored. And then she starts the whole scenario all over again. I mean, she is the mother of lust and infertility. So she might be a little uh <laughs> scandalous, as I say. She does want a world full of kids from her descendant. Interesting. 
but yeah, I'm, we're gonna call it from here. I'm gonna see if I can find another ending. If I, um, if I do, it's either gonna be added to this video or it's going to be in another video, depending on how long it is. But yeah, thank you all for watching me play this game, and I hope you all have a good one. This was, a, you know, this was fun. There's some mysteries here. I, I really do like it. As I said, this definitely leaned more towards the horror aspect, unlike freaking Lynetta, who I think actually loved you. But yeah, you guys have a good one, and I will see you in the next video. GG's.